Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And by the time you're listening to it, possibly loangeek.io. In fact, this podcast is sponsored by loangeek.io. Automate your payments for your borrowers. You like that, Scott Todd? Uh, yeah, you, you might sound a little car dealership there. I don't know. It's, it's good though. It's, it's good for you. It's outside your normal, um, your normal flow. Yeah, it is. It, it really is. I'm, you know, you gotta, you gotta throw things against the wall. And our guest today is going to talk to us about influencing and marketing and building a business and growing your business. And I'm really excited because, uh, what this guy has done and is doing is, is pretty phenomenal. So before we get to our podcast guest, I do want to formally introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. Scott Todd of scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist ads, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I am great. Uh, staying busy. Busy day today and a busy week. And, you know, it, it seems like a long way away, but like boot camp's like a month away. But I know it's going to be here before we know it. It's, it's crazy how time flies. I just feel like we were together at boot camp in Vegas. But I got to tell you something. This guest that we have today is like making the day because he's kind of a celebrity. He's kind of, you know, I'm going to put on my anchorman voice, Josh. You're kind of a big deal. He is kind of a big deal. I mean, this guy, he, he's on Mashable. I mean, I don't, we've never had a guest from Mashable. Mashable. He's, you know what? He's been featured on Time and Forbes and Entrepreneur and yeah. TechCrunch. And, and now I, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's dying on a podcast that, or, that is actually, you know, prestigious. Good for you, yeah. Jesse. He finally made it huge. I better be careful here. If I listen to you guys too much, I might start believing what you're saying here. Oh, uh, you know what? And look at that. He's even humble. Let's talk yeah. about Josh Steinle from joshsteinle.com. And, hey, and guys. It's excited to be here. So Josh uh, trains busy executives and entrepreneurs on how to become thought leaders and influencers, right? So if you want to speak at a TEDx event, you want to get a book deal, you want to get paid to travel and speak at events around the world, you want to be interviewed on national radio and TV, you want to publish articles on you know Forbes or Time or Mashable TechCrunch, you want to 10x your email list, which by the way, Josh, we want to 10x our email list. You want to build your audience on social media. You want to make money with an online course. Josh can teach you how to do that. But before we, we delve too deep into that, let's just welcome Josh Stanley. How are you, Josh? I'm doing great. I'm excited to be here, guys. This is going to be great. All the way from which part of China are you in right now? Are you in Hong Kong? I'm in Shenzhen, China, which is just across the border from Hong Kong. And since most people tend not to know where Hong Kong or Shenzhen, China are, it's on the southern part of China. So it's down towards the bottom of things. So what time is it right now? It is 5.10 a.m. Oh, my gosh. So it, this is you... when I wake up anyway. So I'm, I'm ready to go. All right. Fantastic. So... You've been running a digital agency, MWI, since 1999, right? That's correct. I started in 1999 when I was a college student. Got started young. Okay. Okay. So tell us about your entrepreneurial journey, how you got started, why you got started, and how things have evolved. Is that a fair question to start with? Sure. My entrepreneurial journey really started when I was a kid. I remember doing odd jobs when I was five and six around the house and my parents teaching me about money and giving me a ledger book. My dad gave me a ledger book when I was five years old to track income and outgo and my finances and taught me those basics. And I grew up watching my mother who was creative and my father who was a rocket scientist, but also was an inventor and was creating things and had a little business and I just always saw that I could go out and just do things on my own and make things happen. I didn't have to ask anybody's permission and that appealed to me. And so when I was a kid, I would sell things, I would recycle. I was just doing things on my own to earn little money here and there. And that grew into starting my own business when I was in college. I got a business back in 1999 working for one of these tech.com businesses and saw how much fun the founders were having and thought, 
well, I can do this. Why? These guys aren't geniuses. I could go out and run my own business. Turns out they actually were pretty smart and I wasn't quite as smart as they were and they ended up making a billion dollar business and I haven't quite got there yet, but I've had a great adventure over the past 16 years running my business. We do digital marketing, so we do SEO and content marketing and just all sorts of marketing for our different clients. And it's been an amazing experience, a lot of growth, a lot of learning, lots of mistakes, but that's where learning comes from. And I've really enjoyed that journey and some of the twists and turns it's had for me, especially things like ending up in China. Wasn't, I didn't see that coming. Fantastic. Um, what would you say has been the greatest challenge for you as an entrepreneur? One of the greatest challenges I face is as an entrepreneur, I've got this shiny object syndrome where I see opportunities in everything. And I'll give you an example. The other day I'm here in China and there's a place where you can go and find all these artists who are really great artists, but they, you can just take any picture to them and they'll copy it. They'll make a painting of it. So I can take a photo to these artists and for about $60, they'll create this amazing painting of this picture. Well, as soon as I see that as an entrepreneur, I think, well, gee, I could start taking all sorts of pictures to these guys and they start doing these paintings and then I get a distribution deal in the US and I can sell these paintings for 200 or $300 a piece. I start thinking this way and soon I'm off on this rabbit chase and yeah, that might be a great business, but that's not my business. That's not what I need to focus on and I can't get distracted by that type of opportunity and that's, one of the main challenges I face is figuring out what not to do because there are so many opportunities out there and focusing on what is my, my game. That, that's tremendous advice because even Scott Todd in an earlier podcast has admitted that he has shiny object syndrome. I mean, I, it's, it's crazy because you see so many opportunities. It's like, uh, it's like going to a buffet. Where do you start? Yep. Yep. They're just, there, there's so much opportunity out there. And whenever I hear young entrepreneurs say, oh, I just don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I understand that if they mean there are too many opportunities, but usually they mean, I don't see any opportunities. I don't see what to do. And I think, boy, you know, just go out there and see what people are doing and see what people are struggling with and the pain points and what people want, what people are already spending money on. And you can figure out better ways to deliver what's already being delivered, or you can figure out what's not being delivered. And there's just so many opportunities out there for young entrepreneurs or older entrepreneurs these days. No, it, it, it's so true. It's, it's best time ever to be in business. Wouldn't, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Hey, Josh, I have a question. Do you think that the, the lack of opportunity um, goes because you know, we, we don't have a lot of new experiences, but maybe someone that has like more experiences or travels more like you, you know, you're, you're able to see more opportunities because you're, you're able to connect more dots because you've built those experiences versus someone who's like younger, who, who basically says, I don't really see the opportunity. I don't see how to do this. And they don't necessarily move forward, but they're not trying to experience different things so they can connect dots together. Is that, do you think that's a fair statement? I think that is fair. I think traveling really opens the mind and helps you to, like you say, connect the dots. I see things that people do in the United States and then I go to China and I think, hey, they're not doing X, Y, Z over here. Somebody could come over here and start a business doing X, Y, Z and there's an opportunity. So travel, I think, really opens the mind. I also think, of course, for a young college student, they might not have the time or the budget to travel around the world and see these opportunities. But reading books is another way to travel virtually. I mean, books are the original virtual reality. And for young people, I think reading books is the best way to open the mind, to get exposure, to get ideas, because as soon as you start reading books, you start seeing how other people created their businesses, how they've built up their success. And it, it's like traveling, but without leaving home and without having to spend nearly as much money. Yeah, you know, speaking of books, I'm on Josh's website, which we'll talk about, and he's got all these great books that I've read on his reading list. But what I want to know, Josh, is if I put you on a desert island and you can only have five of these books, which are your top five? 
Shoot, top five. That is a really tough question for me because I love reading books and I love reading audiobooks actually. I'm a big fan of audible.com and their app and I I feel like I'm their biggest customer because I just I buy I spend so much money on those audiobooks. And so coming up with a list of five is tough, but I'll try here. Okay. So some of my favorite books, I'll just run through a few of them real quick here. So uh, one of them is, that I read recently that's really been helping me is Virtual Freedom by Chris Ducker. So if you've ever felt like, oh, I'm just too busy, I've got too much to do, I need to clone myself somehow, then you might need a virtual assistant. And, but, and you may have heard people talk about hiring a virtual assistant from the Philippines or somewhere else, but you just think, well, how do I do that? What are the details? I mean, how exactly do I hire them? How do I manage them? How do I make this work out? And I tried it before and it failed. And then I read Chris Ducker's book, Virtual Freedom, and he just gives step-by-step instructions on how to make that relationship work and how to hire and all that. And so I read that recently. I thought, oh, this is what I needed, you know, 10 years ago. And so that's a great one. Another great one I read recently is Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday. This is a new book that just came out. And it's just all about how pride keeps us from learning because we think we already know it all. And then we don't progress and then we can't see our flaws and we can't get better and we can't overcome those things and become a better businessman, father, or whatever it is. Uh, another one is uh, Brian Tracy. Anybody who's into sales probably has heard of Brian Tracy. He's got great books out there like the psychology of sales, I think is a big one. And then he's got this book called the power of self-confidence. And I've noticed that, People who are self-confident are more attractive and they're more successful. And it's just because they're confident sometimes because when you're confident, you try things. And when you try things, you eventually succeed. And when you lack confidence, you don't try things. And if you don't try things, then of course you're never going to succeed. So I think there's a lot to be said just for having self-confident. And I see a lot of people who are not very bright, but they're very self-confident and they're very successful. And I think it goes back to just, they try things. So that's number three. And then I think, uh, let's go with number four is, I'm gonna say uh, Creativity Inc. is a wonderful book I read about a year ago. It's about the founding of Pixar. So if you've ever watched Toy Story or Finding Nemo or any of these movies, this is the story behind the company that makes all those movies. And it's a fascinating journey of entrepreneurship and struggle. And I didn't know that Pixar almost went out of business and that Steve Jobs poured $50 million of his own money into this. And then it almost went under. And there's a great story in there about how they were almost done with Toy Story. And then they lost all the files. They got accidentally deleted and they found all the, a copy of the files on an employee's laptop at their, her house. And, they wrapped it up in pillows and drove it very slowly back to the office. And there are these great stories about the founding of Pixar and its history and how it became so successful at making these movies. But it's just also a great book about entrepreneurship. And there's some interesting stuff about Steve Jobs in there too that's different from what we normally hear about him. And then I'm going to, let's see, for my last choice there on the books, I'm going to go with uh, The Go-Giver by Bob Berg. This is a great short little book, and it's just about values and helping people out. And it's a book that I need to read about 10 more times, but it's about generosity, about culture, about values, about honor, and all wrapping all that up into business. And it's just been a fantastic read for me. And again, it's one of those books that you read, and as soon as you put it down, you say, wow, I need to read that again because there's some great nuggets of wisdom in there. Yeah, I I, I love that um, idea. We had a podcast in, uh, I forget his name because we've done so many now, but he said something that really resonated with me. He said, you know, treat people in business, in business with the same values that you would at home. Like why, why bifurcate it? Right. And a lot of times what I see are people who are um, money driven, right. And not, value driven and not, Hey, I want to give as much value to the world as possible. And then, you know, I'll get this exchange in value, which we'll call money. Right. And, um, I, I, I see that it kind of as a, a fatal fall from the start. Do you see that a lot, Josh? 
Yeah, and the funny thing about that is I think if you're money driven, really you should be values driven because I think if you're values driven, you end up making more money. And so even if you look at it just from the point standpoint of being completely selfish, I still think the best way to be is value driven and to forget about the money and you'll end up making more money that way. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, but I, I love the books that you you picked, and um, I, I love this this whole list. I'm I'm also an, an Audible junkie as well, um, and uh, so this you know for me selfishly this is this is really really interesting. So you didn't you didn't want to pick the the long book Titan: The Life of John W. Uh, D. Rockefeller Senior, huh? <laughs> yeah, that is one of my favorites. But yes, that is a long book. And actually, it's kind of a downer. I read that book and <laughs> parts of it are inspiring. But then he ends up becoming old and senile and doing and saying all sorts of crazy stuff. And also, it to me, it was a warning about what can happen to you with money and kind of the corrupting influence of money. And so it's it's not a pleasant book per se. It's more of a warning, I think, to people that, hey, if you are making a lot of money, or you're going to make a lot of money, here's some warning things that you need to watch out for. Yeah. Yeah. It's, he, he had an interesting life, that guy did. Yep. So, it's, Mark, like, so, so you, you obviously have a, a love, Josh, a love of uh, books, love of reading. Um, how do you, how do you take that information and you know you, you're you're a writer i mean like you take that and you you know you've written for forbes and entrepreneur mashable tech crunch time i mean like your website's filled with information I mean, like you're all over the place BDM, you're you're everywhere how do you take that and leverage that for business so that you can pull back customers or you know prospects back into your into your you know, web, if you will. Sure. So I love to write and I think I love to write because I love to read first. And so reading helped me to develop an ear or eye or whatever you want to call it for writing as well. And when I started writing at first, nobody cared what I wrote. And I just wrote about whatever I was thinking about and my the fascinating thoughts that I had, but nobody else seemed to care about. And then I changed something. I started answering questions about what I do and what I know. So I run a digital marketing agency. A lot of people are puzzled by SEO and paid search and social media marketing. And I knew all about this stuff. So I just started answering questions on my blog posts and in my Forbes posts. And when I started answering common questions about these services and essentially giving my secrets away, I told people how to do what I'm doing. And when I really opened up and shared those secrets, all of a sudden people really started to care about what I was writing and started responding to what I was writing and they started hiring my company. So this isn't any secret, but for me it was a revelation that, oh, if you give away your best advice, your best, the best value you can, if you just give that away for free, yeah, sure, some people might go and implement that on their own and then they never talk to you, but a lot of people are going to come back and say, hey, I read your post. I love what you're saying. You sound like you know what you're talking about. And we want to hire you to do this because we can't do it ourselves. Even though you've given us the secrets, we just don't have the time. We don't want to do it or we still don't think we can do it. And so that just grew my business by leaps and bounds. And so over the past three years, I got to write for Forbes three years ago. And then all the other publications came after that. And as a result of the writing I've done over the three, last three years, it has generated millions of dollars in revenue for my agency. So I'm a big believer in writing and the power of writing and the power of answering questions and giving away secrets for free. Yeah, I, I love that strategy. And there's a great book. I don't know if you, I'm sure, obviously you probably listened to it or read it, gosh. But it's, it's uh, Adam Grant, uh, Give and Take. Oh, yes. I love that book. I just read that within the past year. Yeah, so you're you're starting with generosity, but I'm sure you're setting limits, right? But um, and it's it's very interesting to me that um, you know for me as the land geek, like I remember when I first started that, my wife said to me like, Mark, Mark, what are you doing? You're going to create your own competition. And I said to her, Well, look, I got this huge market, and 
I, I, you know, I can't buy up all the land. And I don't think if there's a, you know, a hundred million people in this niche, they could buy up all the land. We'll, we'll all run out of money first. And she said, oh, oh, okay. But you know, she was scared that I was going to give away all these secrets and create all my competition. But the best thing I've ever done is build this community of people because, you know, it's, it, it's really just accelerated frontier properties because now I have more people interested in, in buying uh, and selling raw land and, it kind of comes back. Do you, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very interesting concept to me. Yeah, we have this natural built-in uh, drive to hold on to things, to be afraid to give, because if we give too much, then we won't have anything. And I've seen just the opposite. The more I give, the more I get. And so you said, you know, I probably put limits on giving. Well, the only limit I have is my time and I try to give as much as possible because the more I give, the more I get back. And so I'm hiring researchers to help me gather information for articles, to help me create rough drafts because I want to produce as much written content as possible and give away as much knowledge as I can because the more I give away, the more I get back. And so for me, it's, it's a formula that works and anything I can do, whether it's video, podcasts, blogging, anything I can do speaking to get content out there and give my secrets away, the more the better, because I know the more I give, the more I'm going to get. And plus it's a lot more fun that way. It's fun to give. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely agree. And I think anybody who's listening to this podcast, that's the best way to build up your buyers list, right? Even if you're not in land investing, any, anything that you're doing, if you start off giving, 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 and give away your best stuff, it's gonna come back to you 10X. Yeah, you see all these websites where you have to sign up and give your email address in order to get some sort of resource like an ebook or something and you think, oh, but that's probably their junk stuff that I don't really wanna read and they're just giving that trash away. Well, no, they're giving away their best stuff in those ebooks because they know if they give away real value, you're gonna love them and you're gonna come back and you're going to want more from them and so that's where you can get a lot of great value is signing up for those email newsletters and getting that free ebook if it's something that you're interested in. And that's the secret a lot of these marketers out there know is the more they give away, the more value they give away, especially early on in the relationship, the more that they're going to get back in terms of loyalty and people following them and spreading their message. Yeah, I, I could agree more. Um, yes. Yeah. Scott, what, what do you think is the future of SEO and content marketing? And, you know, I think, because Josh, like, it seems like the inbox is becoming like, you know, direct mail used to be. We're just, you know, we've all opted in. We're all inundated. And nobody has time. Um, Scott, I'd be curious what you think about it. And Josh, I'd be curious what you think about it. Well, from the, from the inbox, you know, I think that there's, um, I think that there's all, there'll always be a camp of people that enjoy getting email, you know, just like there's people that still want to get mail. Um, I think that the, the percentage will go down that, you know, kind of your open rates and your response rates um, as people kind of tune out. I mean, there's, there are, I mean, just look at the new Apple update, uh, the, the iOS update, iOS 10, at the very top of, a, of an email now that has an unsubscribe option, at the very top it says unsubscribe for this. There's plugins and there's services that help you unsubscribe so that you can get to inbox zero, uh, which is a goal for certain people. And so, you know, it becomes, uh, it's gonna become harder to get through the inbox, I think. But I think that there's still a market there. I think that you have to look at other, other technologies uh, to engage with people too. Totally agree. And one of the services I love is unroll.me. And that's one of those services that helps you unsubscribe. And I just uh, signed up for that. I unsubscribed from 200 emails or something in the past month. And so I'm feeling that as well. But you know, there are certain emails I will not unsubscribe from. And those are the email lists that give me great value that help me run my business. And so I think email is a great way to interface with your customers and to build a relationship, but you've got to have great content. 
And too many people feel like they've been sending out spam, which is content nobody wants. But if you send out great content, then email is a great way to maintain a relationship with your customer base. But it all goes back to that great content. People today, ad blockers and people not watching TV and going online, they're in search of great content. They still want content. They want to consume lots of content. They just don't want to consume bad content and they have no patience for bad content. So the secret to marketing isn't some new tactic or technology, it's to create great content and then you figure out what channel is going to be best to deliver that content. Yeah, I absolutely agree. So, so Josh, going through your entrepreneurial journey, if you could go back in time and change any one thing, what would you have changed? If I could change any one thing, it goes back to that shiny object syndrome. I would focus more on my strengths and what I'm good at, and I would not get distracted by a lot of side things. There have been a lot of side businesses I've tried to start over the years, and a lot of that has been distraction for me. It's distracted me from my key goal, and also going talking about this focus thing, I would have figured out what my focus really should be earlier. It's only been later in the business that I've come to realize that what I really enjoy about running a business and about the work that I do is I would like seeing people reach their full potential and helping them do that. So that's where I get the biggest satisfaction in my business. It's not making money. It's not awards or anything like that. It's seeing my team progress and grow as people, as workers, as human beings, and seeing that with my clients too, seeing their businesses grow and seeing them able to achieve their dreams and their ambitions because their businesses are growing and seeing people reach their potential. That's what really gives me satisfaction running my business. And I wish I had understood that better 15 years ago when I was starting this. I love it. I love it. Good advice. It's, it's great advice. Um, knowing, you know, knowing what you know now about other entrepreneurs, watching them doing their marketing, you know, seeing their pain points, right? And if you see an entrepreneur who's just starting out, let's say, in their marketing process, where would you say is the best place to start to get the most bang for their buck, right? Would it be something like content marketing, giving out great content? Would it be you know, doing something like a paid Facebook ad uh, and, you know, driving people to, let's say, a, a great um, marketing piece or great content piece that you created. Knowing what you know, you know now, what, what do you think for a newbie would be the best place to start getting the most bang for their buck? Well, let's just say it's a given that you have to have a great website. If you don't have a great website, it's like not having anything really. I mean, that is your business. That is your retail storefront. That is your business card. That is your brochure. It's all those things from 30 years ago. That's your website today. So let's just say that that's a given. You have to have a great website. But if you already have a great website that's up there and just nobody cares, nobody's reading it, then you have to figure out how to get traffic there. And if you're in a hurry, then it's going to be something like paid search or advertising on Facebook. And I think there are some great opportunities on Facebook because of the targeting that Facebook allows you to do. So on Facebook, you can go there and you can target people by where they live, how old they are, male or female, if you have a product that's directed towards male or female. And you can also target people based on their interests. So we ran a campaign for one of our clients about a year ago, and it was a humorous campaign around politics. And so we were targeting people who are interested in BuzzFeed and certain types of humor. And so it performed really well because we were able to target those ads to people who would be more likely to click on that ad and respond to that ad. And Facebook just gives you some amazing targeting tools that you can't get with Google AdWords or really any other way or any other social network because Facebook has so much information about you, which when you get into Facebook's advertising platform, it can almost be scary because you see all these tools and you realize, wow, they have all this data on me and they know all this information about me. 
But when you look at it as a marketing tool to target your audience, it's wonderful because you think, wow, this is amazing. I know so much about these people. So I can deliver my content to the right people who are going to be really interested in it. So that would probably be, if I had $5,000 to start a business, I'd put a lot of it into Facebook probably, but it really can depend on the business. Different businesses respond to different marketing, but Facebook I think is a great place to look for a lot of people. All right. Good advice. Good advice. Scott Todd, are we ready for our tips of the week? I think so. Or, or do you have any other questions? I'm good. Are you good? All right. Josh Steinle, are you ready to get put on the spot? I'm ready. All right. So what is your tip of the week for the Art of Passive Income listeners? A website, a resource, a book. We already talked about a lot of books, but something actionable where the Art of Passive Income listeners can go, improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? So I am going to refer everybody to Brian Harris, who is an email list building guru slash expert. Uh, I stumbled onto this guy a few months ago and his website is videofruit.com. I have no idea where the name of that website came from. It doesn't seem to have anything to do with his business. But Brian Harris is a great guy and he gives out tips on how to build an email list. And boy, I wish I had stumbled onto this guy 10 years ago because I would have an email list with 100,000 subscribers on it today if I had known about this 10 years ago. But instead, I just got started a few months ago and so my email list is over just barely 1,000 now. But that's all happened as a result of what I've been doing with Brian. I haven't paid him a dime. I haven't paid for anything. Everything I've done with his advice has just been based on his free advice. He does sell courses, he does sell marketing packages and such, but I've just listened to his free advice and that's been great value for me. So videofruit.com, Brian Harris, he will teach you how to grow your email list and how to turn that email list into income for your business, whatever it is that you do. I also follow Brian, he's great. That's, that's a right. great, great tip. Brian is good. Yeah, you, you follow him too? I do, yeah, good, good advice wow. there. I'll do. You guys already know the secret then. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah. Great. What you know the secret is actually executing on the advice. Yeah. Exactly, yes. I've only executed on a tiny part of it. I feel like I'm using 2% of Brian's wisdom, but I'm getting so much value out of that. I love it. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, our listeners can't see, but in my hand is a wad of money. And I am here to save you money. I, I'm like your best friend today because I'm going to save you $578 with this tip. Ready? I'm ready. All right. I know how much you love uh, software as services, you know, all of these services and everything. And then like everybody, you have these things and then you lose track of them. How do you keep track of them? card life check out cardlifeapp.com oh my gosh i was just on this site this right. is a card great life app.com it keeps track of all your your business software as services SaaS, all in one place the average average person saves 587 dollars a month so don't say i never saved you any money mark i i'm bringing you money to this podcast i i'm creating an account right now yeah, have fun with that. I thought um, I thought of you for that, but also, I mean, like anybody, you know, you uh, you do you do get. Uh, I mean, I'm guilty of it too. I've got softwares that I pay for every month, and I just keep forgetting to cancel it. Ugh. It's it's so true. It's can so can true. you imagine though? Like, if the average is five hundred eighty-seven dollars, that means that there's some guy saving like ten bucks a month, and that yeah. means there's somebody saving a thousand dollars a month. It's a phenomenal idea. I don't know why we didn't think of it. You know why? Because we don't have shiny object syndrome. True, true. That stays behind me. You know what's so funny about that is, you know, when Josh was discuss discussing the guy that, or the, the, the Chinese artists for 60 yeah. bucks, yeah. one of my friends out here does that. His company's called Painted With Oil, and that's where he sources his art. And he does the wow. exact same thing. They, they take the art pieces and they sell it for 300 bucks framed. Or not, maybe not even framed. They're beautiful, yeah. but he's getting it all from Chinese artists. I love that idea, though, because you can give it. You could, you could, like, you could implement that in our business. Think about it. you could get a piece, a picture of a piece of land, 
someone buys it and then they get this picture. Talk about like phenomenal. No, it's, it's not a bad idea. Uh, yeah. 60 bucks. I, love, I like need, the simple postcard too. That's two bucks. Yeah. We just need Josh to, to be the project manager over there and get everything done for us. Right, right. So my tip of the week is joshstimely.com. And uh, Josh is giving away so much valuable information. It's, you should be embarrassed, Josh. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed. I'm proud. It's so good. Yeah, you should be very proud. Um, and, uh, you know, we're proud to have you on the podcast. So I'll spell the name. It's J-O-S-H-S-T-E-I-M-L-E.com. You can subscribe to his, less, his free co- seven lesson course to become an influencer, which I'm going to do right now. Um, and uh, it's great. So, Josh, are we good? Uh, this has been great. Thank you so much, guys. I've really enjoyed this. This has been a great conversation. Yeah, I, I, we really appreciate you coming on the podcast, and uh, we'll definitely stay in touch and, um, you know, hopefully have you back on. And, you know, it's, I know you've been on Time and Forbes and Entrepreneur and all these, you know, peer two kind of <laughs> media companies. But congrats <laughs> for, for making it to the top, Josh. Well, this is the pinnacle of my achievement right here, though, guys. Yeah, That's yeah. Awesome. So, no, <laughs> yes. But no, honestly and seriously, we really appreciate you taking time out of your very busy schedule to, uh, to share your knowledge and wisdom with us and the art of Passive Income Mile listeners. And um, it's been fantastic. So, thanks so much. I'm going to read those books as well. Because some of them that you mentioned, I haven't read. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't read Creativity. That's a great one. And thank you so much for the opportunity of being on here. I really appreciate you reaching out and I appreciate being on the show with you guys. Well, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And um, if you are listening to this, please learn more. Uh, go to joshstimley.com. I will have the link in the show notes. And look, give Scott Todd and I some love. Okay. Subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Uh, it really, really helps because a guy like Josh Steinle is going to look at the podcast and be like, well, should I go on that podcast or not? And if no one's reviewing it, he's probably not. Right, Josh? Yeah. Well, you know what? I love you guys, so I'd be on the podcast anyway. But yeah, those ratings are huge. They make the podcast show up higher. It spreads the word. It helps everybody. So yeah, go and rate that podcast. Give it a rating and give it a review. Yeah. And share it. Send it around. You know, there's these little social media sites like Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. So that, that would help too. Uh, we really appreciate it. We appreciate you, the listener. Um, go to thelandgeek.com, learn more uh, how to create a passive income in raw land, get the passive income blueprint, get the ebook, how to avoid three kind of land buying mistakes, and get this always an informative and engaging podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. And don't forget about my good looking co host, Scott Todd hostingdomination.com forward slash the land geek is the place to go it really is and scott is. and landmoto.com and frontierpropertiesusa.com so check it all out uh thanks everybody and uh josh thank you again and we'll see everybody next time thank you so much let freedom ring, freedom ring. scott <laughs> we're never gonna get it we're, we're, we're never gonna get it we're trying all right yeah, see you everybody.